Welcome to my channel. My name's Jared. This is another Sunday update video. I also post silent build videos on Wednesdays, so be sure to check those out as well. Today, we're going to talk about a new project, and we're also going to talk about the Model T. Okay, so, um, so first off, sorry I didn't put out a build video this Wednesday. Uh, I'll explain why now. Um, but so this is a new car that I bought. This is a 2000 Jeep Cherokee. It's also known as an XJ. Um, I did not buy this to do a project build series on it. Uh, I just bought it because I like it. I like this style of Jeep. Um, I've been looking for a clean one for a while just to kind of use as a daily driver to haul things around. Um, and these are going up in value and so I wanted to get one before they got too expensive. And this is a really nice one. It has a lot of miles, they all do. It has 200,000 miles on it. Um, but it runs great. It's in good shape. The body's in good shape. There's no rust. It hasn't been off-roaded or modified in any way. Um, the interior is in really good shape. So it's just a good car to have, and I got it at a good price. Um, however, I did plan on, and I tried to do one um, video on this, which was painting the roof. So when I bought it, a big section up here of paint was flaking off. Uh, and I'll, I'll try to put in some video clips that I was going to use in the build video to kind of show you what it looked like. Uh, but there was a big area here where the paint was coming off and I thought, well, you know, it's on the roof for one, so you can't see it really. It's not that noticeable. Um, so it's not that big of a deal. And then I thought, well, I'll just buy a kit uh, and I'll just kind of spray paint that area and kind of blend it in and it should come out just fine. It's not that big of a deal. Um, that's not how it worked out. As I tried to prep the surface to repaint it, when I hit it with the compressed air to blow it off, more paint came off and then more and more came off. And as I tried to paint it, the paint was peeling up over the edges. So whenever I would spray new paint on it, it would soak in under the old paint and then that would bubble up and that would start coming off. And so the area that needed to get painted just got bigger and bigger. Um, and then the weather was bad, it was cold and windy and so the paint wasn't going on well. So the products I was using I think were fine and I think they could have done that type of repair. Maybe if it, especially if it was a little bit smaller it would have been fine. But as it got bigger there wasn't really enough in the, the single can of paint and primer and everything that I needed. To, to do it. So ultimately, I would not do that again. Um, what I should have done and what I'll probably end up doing is just stripping the paint all the way on the top up to this rail and to the windshield and to the back hatch, taking off this rack, just prepping the whole top and repainting the thing correctly. And I think honestly, it would have taken me less time to do that and it would have been done correctly instead of this little patchwork that I tried doing. So I wouldn't do that again. Um, but it is what it is, and actually it does look better than it did because from a distance now you don't see it at all and you used to be able to see that, that, that spot where the paint was coming off. But like I said, it's on the roof. You don't see it that much anyway. I mean, I'm tall and I can barely see it. So not that big of a deal. I will probably just drive it as it is now for a while. I will, once that dries for a few days, I'll buff that out so that it matches a little bit better. Uh, but then I'll probably drive it like that, who knows, maybe for years. Um, but then... Eventually, uh, I will probably just fix it correctly and paint the whole top of the car. Um, but like I said, it's really just kind of a daily drive or something to haul things around in, so it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, but yeah, I do like these. I think this is a very um, classic style, and I really like, I've always liked the look of them. I like this color, I like the wheels. So anyway, that's my new Cherokee, and that's why I didn't have a build video on Wednesday. But um, this week, just like last week, there's been a lot of growth in the channel and it's mostly been due to the Model T videos. So now we're gonna talk about the Model T. Okay, so now we'll talk about the Model T. So uh, in the last update video, I mentioned I had a few things I needed to fix on this car. There was an issue with the ignition switch, some oil leaks, and the exhaust manifold um, and exhaust pipe were wrong and there were a lot of exhaust leaks there. So I have fixed some of that. Um, so first off, the ignition switch. I fixed it. I took it apart, cleaned the contacts. It works well now. Makes good contact as it should. So that's good. The 
exhaust manifold. I put the new exhaust manifold on and the correct exhaust pipe. You see it has that big nut that connects it. I also used this copper crush type gasket, uh, which seems to be working much better. I think I've pretty much eliminated all the exhaust leaks up here. Uh, it's still a little noisy and I've went ahead and ordered a new muffler for it to see if that quiets it down, but I'm not really sure how much those mufflers actually really quiet them down. I don't know if there's any kind of padding or anything inside of there. Uh, but anyway, I fixed uh, the exhaust leaks up here. I still need to replace the bolts on the oil pan to try to fix the oil leaks there. But I did fix on the other side where this hogshead meets the engine in that corner. There was quite a bit of oil coming out of there and that's just a felt uh, gasket. So I took some felt from another gasket that wasn't being used and I shoved it in there um, and that helped at least stop the major oil leak. Um, I still need to replace those bolts and I'm going to do that later because uh, I'm trying to figure out if this generator works or not. On the amp meter on the uh, dash, it doesn't show any positive charging when it's running. So it could be the generator or it could be this, I think this is called a stepper or a stopper or something like that. It could be that one of these two is not working. So I'm gonna test those, but I need to take the generator off to get to those bolts. So I'm gonna do that kind of all at once. Um, and then there's some other little things. I still need to hook up the lights and get the horn working and stuff like that. Uh, but I did make good progress. Um, and so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to try to hand start it. So um, I have, started it with the starter just now to let it warm up a little bit because I've tried hand cranking it when it's cold and I'm sure it could be done but I'm not familiar enough with how much I need to prime it and exactly where the throttle needs to be set um, to try to get it to start cold so it is slightly warm uh, but still it's going to be interesting to see if it'll hand crank and how easily that can be done so set the camera down here and we'll give this a shot First, I'm going to uh, make sure that the timing is fully retarded and then advance the throttle a little bit. All right, see what happens. Okay, so in case you couldn't hear me, I switched from battery to magneto and it was still running. Now, let's see if we can start it on the magneto. I think that's much more difficult. If the magneto is not set up correctly, uh, it can run off of the magneto, but it's much harder to get it to start off of it. So let's try that out, see if that'll work. So we gave a little throttle. Come around here. We're gonna retard the timing. We got it on magneto. A little bit of throttle. Set the camera down over here. Let's see what happens. So if this works, in theory, you could run this without ever even having a battery in it. You could just start it and run it right off the magneto.
Okay, awesome. All right, well, that's it for the Model T. So I guess that's it for this week, guys. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing.